okay welcome to lecture 2 we have already discussed the difference between the continuous time signal and discrete time signal and we now know that a continuous time signal can be represented as sequence of infinite numbers of samples where the signal can vary at any moment of time it's not in our hand to hold the signal for a while so such a signal is called continuous signal whereas if I apply a sampling and holding process over it then the signal shown over here may look something like this right so this is actually a discrete representation of the continuous time signal where samples are taken at regular interval and we know that samples are taken at the rate called sampling time Ts which is inverse of sampling frequency Fs. So now we have two agenda for this lecture. We need to understand a term we left to discuss in the last meeting in the last lecture and that is aliasing or anti-aliasing filter and reconstruction filter and moreover to that we also want to discuss several application so let us start with the application so let us convert a continuous time equation of the integration into the discrete one we generally define y of t suppose y of t is the answer of integration with respect to time of the signal x of t so variable with respect to which integration is done is dt right now and you know very well that integration is accumulation so integration is nothing but the area under curve say this is my waveform so if i want to integrate the signal from time t equal to 0 somewhere over here to say another instant t1 then the duration defined by this time instant needs to be subdivided into small pieces and we know that that can be done by the sampling process so if I take sample of this signals here I may have my first signal x of 0 then after ts period say this is my ts1 I have another sample x of 1 after again ts period that is at instant ts2 I have x of 2 signal and so on up to this point so the difference in time for this segment is also equal to the sampling time ts so integration from time t equal to 0 to t1 can be find out by two of the approaches you can either find out the area of individual strips and then can add it together say we have totally 10 numbers of sample up to x of 9 then area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3 plus area 4 plus area 5 plus area 6 plus area 7 plus area 8 plus area 9 and this one the last area will give you the integration of the signal x of t okay so either find out the individual area or if you are knowing the area from 0 to the another instance say ts9 then 
the area or integration up to t1 can be written as previous area that is area up to ts9 plus new area and where is the new area this one this one is the new area in which we are interested so if you check it carefully the area can be subdivided into two segments the bottom one is a square section and the top one can be approximated can be assumed to be to be a triangular area so summation of these two areas will give me the area from ts9 to t1 so let us do let us find out the area so i can write down area of this triangular piece to be equal to one half into this distance right and you know that this is ts so one half into ts into the height of triangle and how much is the height of triangle you can well measure it because you know this peak right x of 9 and this one is given by x of 8 so x of 9 minus x of 8 is actually height of the triangle so let me write it down x of 9 minus x of 8 okay so this is <coughs> the area for triangle similarly if I write down for area occupied by this square section then it is TS that is this distance into the vertical height given by the strength of previous signal that is x of 8 okay so x of 8 simply simplifying this we have previous area plus 0.5 ts x of 9 minus 0.5 ts x of 8 plus ts into x of 8 these two can be combined together and rewriting the equation we have previous area plus 0.5 ts into x of 9 and this becomes 0.5 ts into x of 8 equals to previous area plus 0.5 ts into x of 9 plus x of 8 now we have assumed here totally 10 numbers of sample representing this discrete signal but it can be of any numbers it may have 20 numbers of sample or 25 numbers of samples and so on so in general i can say that i may have anything over here like x of 20 x of 20 so this is my last sample last sample right or the new sample right this one is the new sample we 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 had we have actually stopped our process or we are at the moment t1 when we want to calculate the integration of x of t we want to find out integration of x of t from 0 to t1 that's why we are at t1 instant and hence the signal available or signal sample at t1 instant is the fresh or new sample for us so this is new sample and if i talk about x of 8 it is actually my past sample okay so in general the equation can be written as previous area plus 0.5 into ts into new sample say x of n 
plus previous sample x of n minus 1 okay so this is actually this will give me actually the integration at an instant n we are at t1 instant and we have defined our sample at that moment to be x of n that's why integration answer of integration at that moment should also have the same index small n so integration y of n can be written simply as the previously accumulated area plus new area where new area can be defined as 0.5 t as x of n plus x of n minus 1 so you go on adding the areas and you will have answer of the integration with respect to the time this particular rule of integration is called trapezoidal rule okay and the matter of appreciation is that it is an algebraic equation we have removed this continuous time integration sign and this equation will give us the same answer as this one it means we have discretized this equation so this is our digital equation or equation of digital integration so what i need i need to sample the signal i need to store the sample and then if this equation is processed i will have the answer for the integration let us try to understand how this can be done physically so in practical situation you may be deriving this sample by use of analog to digital converter now this analog to digital converter may be a off chip analog to digital converter interface with the digital signal processor or it may be an on chip analog to digital converter let's assume that we are using analog to digital converter available inside the microcontroller or dsp itself if you know the basics how microcontroller works then you may be knowing that we need to configure several registers called spatial function registers now the spatial function registers can control the functionality of module so if i want to use a timer i need to provide the information to my microcontroller that in which particular mode i want to use it whether as a 13 bit timer or a 16 bit timer or 8 bit timer or as a counter similarly if i want to use adc on chip adc analog to digital converter i need to configure the on chip analog to digital converter configuration may comprise of defining the clock frequency with which adc may be working so on chip adc will have its maximum speed and it may be operated with the internally synthesized clock and you need to configure the clock frequency for the same please refer to the data sheet and you may configure it up to the maximum possible or maximum allowed clock frequency given in the data sheet say for example if i want to do this integration on the platform of c8051 f120 microcontroller which is a speedy version of 8051 microcontroller which can execute the code 
with the speed 100 million instruction per second and if I want to use ADC0 available inside this microcontroller the maximum speed of this ADC can be 100 kilo sample per second what do you mean by this 100 kilo sample per second it means that this ADC is capable or with the use of this ADC it is possible to derive or to collect 100 kilo that is 100 into 10 raise to 3 that is 1 lakh 1 lakh samples in a second so this is maximum speed and ADC will do it when you configure the clock frequency somewhere around 6.25 megahertz this can be internally set there is a register called ADC 0 CF there are five numbers of bit inside this register with which you can configure the clock frequency for the ADC similarly this ADC may measure a single ended signal or a differential signal so if your application is like or if your signal is a bipolar one means it gets fluctuate in positive as well as negative means its voltage can be positive or negative with respect to ground potential you must use the differential channel because microcontroller is not allowed to operate with the negative signal with respect to the ground and there is a way to measure the negative signal by use of differential channel so we also need to tell our microcontroller we also need to configure whether we want to use the ADC with the single ended channel or differential channel you can also set the internal gain of the amplifier associated with the analog to digital converter available on chip and similar such things are required don't worry this is not going to be part of the examination I am just discussing that in practical scenario if you want to implement this you need to configure several register and for the same you need to refer to the data sheet data sheet of the microcontroller the data sheet of microcontroller is covering all the required details it first explain the module with the help of internal block diagram then there may be some details in form of paragraph which explain you the operation of the module and with certain knowledge or experience to work with the microcontroller you will be able to understand the registers or function of beats of the registers if you can understand the function of the beats of the register you can configure the register for required purpose and finally you will be able to write down the configuration code generally the configuration code can be find inside the main function just before the infinite loop and then when ADC finishes its operation means ADC is ready with the result there can be an interrupt we will be discussing it in more detail during the laboratory hours but ultimately whenever ADC will successfully convert the applied analog signal into digital it will jump into the interrupt service routine written for the ADC 
so it is a function and i can write it down in my program like this void adc isr void interrupt 12 so this indicates that this interrupt service routine is written for analog to digital converter so whenever adc finishes its operation the program counter that it, that points to the instruction going to be executed will jump to the interrupt service routine and lines of code written inside this function will be executed and again and then again program counter will jump back to its normal execution point in short suppose i am deriving the sample at rate of 1 millisecond then after each 1 millisecond i'll be here means my execution will be directed towards or directed to the interrupt service routine so now in short i can say that something written something i am going to write inside this function will be executed at 1 millisecond rate because i will be taking the samples at rate of 1 millisecond i'll be using my analog to deal converter with the sampling frequency of 1 kilohertz as as we know this is adjustable and for the same you need to refer to the sfrs special function registers controlling the register okay so here you need to first collect the information converted by the adc so adc will put its result into two sets of register called adc 0 h and adc 0 l now for c8051 f120 these two registers are of 8 bit size and we need to combine the content of adc 0 h and l so this can be done like this and you can put the result in a variable called result so this must be an unsigned integer if you are doing a single ended conversion and it must be a sign integer if you are doing a differential conversion because the differential conversion may result into the negative numbers and to store the negative number the type of variable should be a sign sign variable you can understand it well if if you know the basics of c programming okay don't worry this is not going to be asked in the examination this is just for the purpose of knowledge you should know how the systems are implemented just by knowing the equation you will not be able to implement it and of course you will need to have knowledge of microcontroller programming at least some knowledge okay now now this is a scale version of the result it means that if i am applying a one volt signal the content of adc 0 l and h will not be like 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 yes of course 0 0 0 1 represents 1 but the result available in this registers adc 0 h and l will be with respect to the reference voltage applied you know that when you say that weight of an object is 2 kilogram or 3 kilogram you are weighing it with respect to a weight that you put in the weighing machine so reference voltage is such a voltage with respect to which the ADC will be measuring or converting 
the applied or given voltage. It means that if I have a 10 bit ADC, okay, let's take 12 bit. If I have a 12 bit ADC, all 12 numbers of bit will be set if ADC has to measure the analog voltage just be, be equal to the reference voltage applied. Say reference voltage is 2.4 volt. So if ADC is supposed to measure 2.4 volt, all of the 12 numbers of bit will be 1. Like 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let me write it down. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 1 1 1 you know that ADC 0 L and ADC 0 H are two register that is going to hold the result and both of these registers are 8 bit registers so contain of ADC 0 H will be something like this 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 and contain of ADC 0 L will be like 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 this lower 12 numbers of bit represents the result of ADC and this will be available when you will be applying 2.4 volt to ADC with gain to be equal to 1 so if I convert this complete number this 16 bit number into the decimal this is binary right if I convert it into the decimal it will be 4096 please convert it the equivalent hexadecimal number is 0 x 0 f this is f 1 1 1 1 right this is also f f f if you convert 0 f f f into decimal it will be 4096 so now you can convert it for any any rep any any voltage applied to the adc with this knowledge you know that adc measure 4096 for application of 2.4 volt then for any x amount of voltage how much will be the result in adc 0 h and l so with this you can say that it will be nothing but the applied signal into 4096 divided by 2.4 volt right applied signal applied signal into 4096 divided by 2.4 will be the result in ADC 0 H and ADC 0 L X into X is the applied voltage to ADC huh? this is not the same as okay this, this is same as x of t okay so x into 4096 divided by 2.4 volt now after conversion after conversion will be over you will have result available in adc 0 h and l so you know this and you want to find out how much is the applied voltage so equation needs to be revised so x is equal to adc 0 h jam l that we have assumed to be inside the variable result so i can write down result into 2.4 divided by 4096 if i write down this equation over here it will inform me about the actual voltage final a voltage equal to result into 2.4 volt divided by 4096 okay now this is your fresh result of the signal measured and you also need to have knowledge of the previous sample 
so how to have knowledge of previous sample if i store this signal in the memory right if i store this signal in the memory then later on i can use it in the next iteration of course right in the next ts time period so the current signal will be a previous signal in the next sampling duration a current signal will be a previous sample in the next sampling duration so let me put it in another float variable say final b vault so final b vault equal to final a vault so we have just shifted the result of final a vault into final b vault so when my program counter will be over here it will have two information that is final b vault already stored for the previous sample as well as the fresh sample final a vault so now you can find out the integration say we want to have the information of integration in a variable called integration so integration is equal to the previous area that is already available in this integration so integration plus 0.5 into ts which we know it very well 1 millisecond 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 into the previous sample that is final underscore b underscore vault plus fresh or new sample that is final underscore a underscore vault okay so this will give me the result of integration please be careful we have implemented the equation in the interrupt service routine for the analog to digital converter so what is the conclusion to implement a discrete system like this like integrator you need to have some knowledge about microcontroller or dual signal processor on which you want to implement this system this equation and moreover to that you also need to have knowledge of mathematics that can do it that is discrete version of the continuous signal or continuous system that you want to solve that you want to implement so hope this is clear to you and similarly we we can extend it we can extend the discussion for the differentiation also let us quickly develop the code or equation for the differentiation i am not going to implement the differentiation in the interrupt service routine of adc i am just going to derive the equation so say a differentiation of x is given by y so d of xt by dt is equal to y of t so what is it basically suppose there is a signal like this you want to find out differentiation at this moment of instant say ty so differentiation is nothing but the difference of signal within a short duration of time called dt say we are sampling this at rate of ts so difference of tx and ty is nothing but the sampling duration ts so dt can be replaced by ts whereas difference of signal can be find out by storing the information of sample 
this is my current sample so let me represent it as x of n and this this is my previous sample so this is actually x of n minus 1 so x of n minus x of n minus 1 gives me d of x of t so if i solve it then i will have differentiation at this moment of time and it is denoted by y of n the sample at t y moment is described by y of n index is n so differentiation at that moment of time should also have the same index n so y of n equal to something written on the right hand side of the equation now 1 by ts is what it is sampling frequency fs so fs into x of n minus x of n minus 1 that is current sample minus previous sample will tell you about the differentiation and you know how can you find out this x of n and x of n minus 1 we have already discussed it so in the interrupt service routine you need to store these two samples in variable and then this equation can be processed so this is discrete representation of the process called differentiation so discrete differentiation so you will be able to derive the discrete equation if you know the physics and basics of the continuous time system or the equation which you want to convert into the discrete one now you may wonder that why i want to study why i should study differentiation and integration you may be knowing it also but let me let me discuss it here there can be a situation when you need to do the integration of the signal or you need to do differentiation of the signal and one of the example you may be knowing is your PI or PID controller you know how this PI controller is represented right so there is a reference signal there is a feedback signal and we generate the error by subtracting feedback from the reference signal so this is error and with the knowledge of error you are going to correct a closed loop system so you will be applying it to the controller like PI or PID if I have a simple PID controller then this error will be first multiplied by a proportional gain called KP it's a constant so error into KP will give you the output of proportional controller this is my proportional control controller then you need to integrate the error and then you need to multiply it with the integrator gain or integration gain ki similarly you may have a controller doing the differentiation so there you need to do differentiation and it will be multiplied by a constant called KD gain of derivative controller 
and output of all of these three controllers will be added together to find out the output of PID controller. So here you need the process of integration. Here you need process of differentiation. Let me give you another example. If you know some basics about the vector control, that is one of the sophisticated control for the electrical drives, the flux of the motor is given by equation psi equal to integration V minus I Ia into Ra Va minus Ia into Ra dt. What is this? Va is the sample or signal of the stator voltage. This is stator voltage. If this is a stator flux, xi s. So if this is stator flux, this is stator voltage. Ia is the current flowing through stator winding. So it may be R phase stator current. You know that you can sample this signal Va and Ia by use of ADC, analog to deal converter. And you can store it. So now ultimately I can revise this equation as xi s is equal to y of t dt. What is y of t? y of t is equal to v a of t. Uh, this is a time varying signal minus i a of t into r and that's why the equation can be written as previous area plus 0.5 into Ts into y of n plus y of n minus 1. Okay. What is y of n? y of n is equal to Va of n minus Ia of n into constant r and similarly y of n minus 1 is Va of n minus 1 minus Ia of n minus 1 into constant r. So you can sample the stator voltage Va of n and Va of n minus 1, the current sample and the previous sample. Similarly, at the same moment of time, you can sample the current signal Ia of n and Ia of n minus 1 and you can find out y of n and y of n minus 1 and with the set of this information you will be able to predict the stator flux xi s of n. So we have discretized the continuous time equation of stator flux into the discrete version. So this is another example when you need to have knowledge how integration can be done or how differentiation can be done. Okay, there are other set of equations also and processing all such information my electrical drive will able to tell me about the reference current Ia star, Ib star, Ic star or Va star, Vb star, Vc star that is required stator voltage or current and required stator voltage and current if implemented if synthesized using the inverter my vector control will be successful means I can vary the speed of motor by controlling the vector the magnetic vector rotating inside you may be knowing the advantage of vector control, right? That's not the point of discussion right now. So ultimately, this subject is going to teach you 
how discrete system can be implemented how continuous time signal can be converted into the discrete time equations moreover to that you will also learn how to implement or how to design digital filter which may be a part of practical systems like grid connected converter or electrical drive or something similar even numerical relaying also require anti aliasing filter of course it is an analog version but if you want to implement it in the digital version then also it's possible by use of knowledge you will be having you will be having after learning the chapter specially designed for digital filter so filter is something which can suppress the harmonic and that's why it may be part of many systems you will be going to implement right you may also need to develop something for the power quality measurement you know sag and swell etc so there you may be interested in the fundamental phaser or harmonic phasers and again you will require knowledge of signal processing processing for the processing power system signals for the measurement of power quality is really a challenge and this particular subject will introduce some basics you may require to process such things and after discussing so much of things now we must be in position to appreciate we must be in position to judge how this subject is going to useful for me